Happy Mother's Day again. <laughs> um, I tried to catch all the ladies as they came in, but if you didn't receive a flower, feel free to grab one on your way out. They're, they're up there. And credit JoJo. He passed a lot of them out, too. Um, I know Mother's Day can cause a mix of emotions, so I hope the flowers bring some joy to everyone. I would like to take a couple minutes of everyone's time. Here's what God has put on my heart as I've been thinking about Mother's Day this year. I pray I'm an encouragement for all of our ladies today. In today's society, it feels like the world is constantly arguing. When I research games and items for the children's ministry, I often find websites that say conflicting things. One might say, oh, this is great for kids, and the other says, this is terrible for kids. When I zoom out and think of not only society, but parenting as a whole, many highly debated scenarios come to mind. Things like, what is a woman? Is a baby still in the womb a human life? Are you allowed to use formula? How much screen time is too much screen time? Should my teenager have a phone? Is it okay for my daughter to wear makeup? Is it okay for my kid to eat red dye number 40? Can I fill in the blank? In a society where no matter what you do, you will be criticized, I'm here to tell you you are doing something right. By bringing your child or children to church, you are continuously introducing them to a God who will never leave or forsake them. Deuteronomy 6, 6 through 7 says, These commandments that I give you today are to be upon your hearts. Impress them on your children. Talk about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road, when you lie down and when you get up. As a child who was born and raised in church, I did not realize the impact being born and raised in church had on me until I was an adult. I didn't even realize the strength of the phrase born and raised in church until recently. I feel like a lot of testimonies start with, oh, well, I was born and raised in church without truly giving that statement the power that it deserves. Christianity can be traced back in my family before my great-grandparents. My great-grandparents, who I briefly met before they went to heaven, passed their faith to my grandmother, who passed her faith to my dad, who passed his faith to me. And that same story can be traced on my mother's side. Some of the most prominent memories of my childhood are moments like seeing with my grandma in church, teaching my younger cousins veggie tale songs, and reading the Bible to my great-grandfather as he got older and couldn't see. And my teenage years were filled with tough conversations questioning if I really knew God or if I was just following my parents' faith. I often turned to the adults in my life, like my parents, grandparents, church leaders, and friends to get new perspectives on God. Now that I have found God for myself, I get the privilege to pass my faith and knowledge onto the kids I teach and hopefully on to my own kids one day. So I wasn't just born and raised in church. I was born and raised in church. What a blessing. That truly feels like the Great Commission to me. Matthew 28, 19 says, Go therefore and make disciples of all nations. I believe making disciples starts in the home, and your children will mirror the behaviors seen at home. Even if you are a first-generation believer, you are still doing great things. Passing your faith down to your kids, grandkids, and great-grandkids is the best gift you could ever give them. By witnessing to your children, you could be unknowingly witnessing to multiple generations to come after you. You cannot protect your kids from their testimony, but you can teach them to follow God through it. For me, going to church every Sunday, reading devotionals during the week, and hearing the adults in my life talk about God created this pillow, pillow of protection I could fall back on as a child. God was always there growing up, whether I wanted him there or not. So as you read your Bible during the week, invite your children to read with you. Have worship music dance parties. Continue to pray with your children. Continue to pray for your children. Don't make God this person that the crazy lady down the street talks to. Don't make God this unreachable, scary big figure in the sky. Let's be honest, I think it's a joke we all pass around. Oh, God can come back any time, but truly time is running out. God is coming back. What better place to start spreading the gospel, the good news, than in our own homes? According to www.babycenter.com, more than 10,000 babies are born a day in the U.S. That's more than 10,000 modern-day miracles a day in the U.S. alone. I know each family here has stories of their miracle baby or babies. What better way to thank God for that baby or babies than to raise your kids in God's love and peace that surpasses all understanding? Teach your kids to lean into their God-given talents. Teach your kids to be patient with those around them. Teach your kids to be kind to those that hurt them. Teach your kids to ask questions. Teach your kids to be bold in their faith, even if it makes others uncomfortable. 
Teach your kids that the same God who was in the fiery furnace with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego is the same God who shut the mouths of lions and the same God who closed the door of the ark, the same God who helped David conquer Goliath and was with Jonah in the belly of a fish, and is the same God who died on the cross for our sins and is in the room with us right now. That God looked at you and said, she is fit to be a mother. How great is our God that he is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. And how blessed are we that all he asks of us to do is come as we are. And I'm sure there's some statistics somewhere saying X percent of kids raised in church won't have a relationship with God. Maybe that statistic is right, but you can say as a parent that you did your best because you included God in your parenting. As someone who was raised in a Christian household, I'm not sure you can go wrong by raising your kids in an environment that is overflowing with God's presence. A Christian band for King and Country released a movie last month telling their, family called, called, telling their family's story called Unsung Hero. I went to see that movie yesterday, and I think that is the perfect title. A pivotal scene in the movie shows the whole family sitting in a circle praying. As important as that is, the scene that caught my eye the most are the moments where the mom had to excuse herself from normal duties to take a minute to cry and pray. The weight on her shoulders was simply too much for her without God. She would then reappear with a face of braveness and calm, ready to balance the needs of her seven children. Moms do so much that goes unnoticed and often unthanked. They truly are the unsung heroes of the household. Thank you to the moms in the room who are just doing their best. Keep doing your best. And for those maybe missing their moms today, know that the best way you can honor your mom is to honor God. And for anyone in between, know that God not only sees you, but he sees your heart. No matter the feelings that come up on Mother's Day, whether good, bad, bittersweet, or in between, I hope you know that God loves you. He truly does. Thank you.